Well, poor people fed up. To your system, shake up your issue gun for whipping the boss. With his estimated net worth of about one million US dollars. Bounty is entitled to spoil himself every once in a while. From his flashy cars to his beautiful house, and he is able to enjoy the fruit of his hard, long labor in the music industry. Come and see what you've been missing on a little slice of heaven. It's the only place for living. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another interesting video. Today, we will take a look into the lavish lifestyle of Rodney Price, aka Bounty Killer. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and remember to like and share the video. Born Rodney Basil Price in Kingston on the 12th of June 1972, this veteran DJ, popularly known as Bounty Killer, is one of Jamaica's best lyricists and dancehall DJ. Most persons in the music fraternity describe him as one of the most aggressive dancehall stars of the 1990s. A street tough rude boy with an unrepentant flair for gun talk. He is considered one of the best dancer lyricists of all times. While growing up, he was one of nine children and so he was forced to seek creative ways for survival at a very young age. He was drawn to music because his father owned and operated the Black Scorpio sound system. He eventually started off his musical career as a sound system DJ in his early teenage years with the stage name Bounty Hunter. But then at the age of 16, Bounty was shot by a stray bullet during a gunfight between rival political fractions. And while recovering in hospital, he decided on the stage name Bounty Killer. After recovering, he increased his performance on a number of sound systems and turned his attention towards recording. His music, which combines a storytelling lyrics, gave him a depth and richness that is uncommon among many of his fellow DJs. Bounty grew up in one of Jamaica's toughest communities, Riverton City, and this has impacted on his lyrical content. His musical skills helped him to win numerous regional talent contests and establish his career with the assistance of the illustrious King Jamies. One of his first tune was Copper Shot, which Jamie was unwilling to release due to the lyrics. But Jamie's brother, Uncle T, disagreeing and release the single which went on to become an underground hit in both Jamaica and New York. In 1993, Rodney Price performed at Sting where he had a high-profile clash with fellow DJ Beanie Man. The rivalry continued throughout the 1990s with both of them accusing each other of stealing each other's stage performance. They settled their differences after both realizing the negative effect their feud was having on the industry. He has also had heated rivalry with several other top DJs, including Merciless, Supercat, and Vibes Cartel. He subsequently left Jammies in 1995 and set up his own Cure Them production company and priceless recording label. Rodney Price is also credited for launching the career of several top DJs who are now household name in the dancehall arena. Some of these persons who it is said that he has assisted or he had assisted includes Vibes Cartel, Movado, Wayne Marshall and Merciless. So, how did Bounty Killer acquired 
his wealth. Well, during the 1990s, Bounty Killer voiced for several producers and labels in Jamaica, releasing songs such as Defend the Poor, Mama, Book, 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 Babylon System, Down in the Ghetto, and Look Good. And then he became known in the US and in Europe, and he have recorded with artists like Buster Rhymes, No Doubt, Master Killer, The Fuji, Wycliffe Jean, among many others. In addition, he has released many albums. So, how does Bounty spend his money? It is said that Bounty owns a house in Upper St. Andrew. And it is rumored that he was in the process of building a mega mansion. But he had some setbacks and was faced with some challenges, and this property was seized by the bank. Bounty is also a lover of luxury vehicle, but for the warlord, 2010 was perhaps the hardest year of his career. It was the year when his luxury vehicles, Land Cruiser and a Range Rover, were seized by the taxmen and he was hauled before the tax court, which they accused him of owing millions of dollars to the government. According to Bounty, he was targeted by the agents of Babylon, and so he suffered serious monetary loss, so much so that he did not even own a car, but now he's given thanks that he has bounced back. He's now the proud owner of a BMW 7 Series, and in fact, not one, but two Mercedes-Benz. But despite all of his setbacks and his many challenges, Bounty Killer still spoils himself with a few expensive pieces of jewelry. And again, setback. Unfortunately, in 2016, he was a victim of an armed robbery where he was relieved of his jewelry. Where he was relieved of his jewelries, valuing about 500000 Jamaican dollars. But among his treasured pieces which he still has is a special necklace which was gifted to him by DJ Khalid expressing his gratitude for assisting him in his early stages of his career. Bounty also finds it in his heart to give back and so in 2018 he started his charity where he called it the Bounty Killer Foundation. And he has made a series of donations to the Kingston Public Hospital, which he said had treated him well during the time when he was shot in 1986. In 2020, through his foundation, he made a cash donation to Jamaican reggae singer Junior Biles, who suffered from mental illness and cancer. These days, the poor people governor is still active in the music industry and his fans have been eagerly awaiting the release of his album King of Kingston. And so we wish the poor people governor all the best for the future and that his wealth will continue to grow. Once again guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.